church this evening. Please stand and join me tonight as we worship the Lord in song, as we sing Love Lifted Me, M390. blessing and privilege is ours to gather together in your house tonight. We pray that you would meet with us. We thank you for the blessings we receive here. We thank you for the work that you are doing. Uh, we're undeserving. We're thankful, Lord, for your graciousness toward us. We pray, Lord, that uh, you would minister grace to each hearer tonight. May we get something from thee. No, we've got something from thee tonight. Lord, we continue to pray for the Demers family. We thank you for a good report there from uh, great services today and the funeral service for Robin Demers. We pray your continued uh, blessing on the family. And Lord, we pray you bless my dad, our pastor Meredith, as he makes his way uh, most of the way, or part of the way home tonight and on in tomorrow. We pray the first travel mercies for him. Watch over us now again, we ask. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing if you would. All right, let's go to hymn 392, Stepping in the Light. Hymn 392. <laughs> Thank you. 
staff got help with school dismissal there but we'll depart as close to 1 30 as we can so if you can be here a little bit ahead of time we'll get luggage packed up and be ready to go when, when our staff are ready we'll we'll hit the trail and then uh, also remember uh, ladies that the ladies meeting for next week has been moved to october the 19th same time so that's a tuesday evening it'll be at 6 30. october the 19th has already been updated on the electronic calendar so if you're following that on your device or computer uh, that will that's already been updated uh, for you and then this Sunday evening uh, after the evening service we'll have a cake and ice cream uh, fellowship send off for the Smith family and so I hope that you'll plan to be here for that enjoy some uh, cupcakes and ice cream one or the other or both whatever your desire or none at all just stick around for the fellowship that'll be fine be fine as well and then please be in prayer for our fall revival meeting with Brother Sam Davison that, that will be here quickly. I think it is three weeks from tonight, or tomorrow night, I'm sorry, which leads me to the next point. And that is that our Wednesday night service that week will be moved to Thursday. So our midweek service, uh, the last week of October, will be on uh, Thursday night. And then he'll be with us again on Friday. So that will be a wonderful time. Brother Sam Davison, I hope you plan to be here for that. And just kind of a little bit of a heads up, we do have a few of those uh, sprinkled into November and December as well. We'll remove our midweek service by a day. It's either on Tuesday or Thursday. We'll try to give you several announcements about that, but they're uh, already on your uh, the church calendar and the e-calendar, but just a heads up about that. All right, Pastor Brent will come and receive our offering tonight. All right, ushers, you make your way forward. Uh, tonight's offering goes to Bethel Baptist School. And um, did you just make the announcement at 1 30 when we just did? You did? Oh, we just missed that 1 30 on Friday. <coughs> so, parents, pick up your kids. Um, well, I won't be here, so I know Joe can do that. Um, so, uh, well, offering you to go to school, have a good year. And, um, and if you can, next week, make it out to watch the, the girls' uh, tournament yes. volleyball game, as well as the game Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, hopefully uh, Saturday as well. So, we'll be in prayer for that. So, Brody, what was your favorite offering tonight? Father, in heaven, I thank you for this day that you're going to Thank you that we're going to to make it here safely to your house. Pray that the message will be a blessing. And I thank you for the ministry that we have through the school and the blessing that people are able to do through that. Pray that you would have give us a message tonight and help us to be exactly what you want us to hear. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Genesis 46. Genesis chapter 46. I hope that you're encouraged. The Lord's been so good to us and grateful for uh, his working. I don't know if I mentioned this from the pulpit Sunday, but we had nine guests here Sunday morning. So we may rejoice in that. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, good to be good to be uh, in the house of the Lord with God's people and guests. And we praise him for his uh, favor upon us. And I also uh, failed to mention earlier, we do plan to have a business meeting next Wednesday night, a week from tonight. And so we're going to uh, be recommending several uh, missions uh, things to you. So I hope that you'll be here next Wednesday night for our business meeting. That'll be at the end of the service, as is uh, as is normal. So uh, that'll be next uh, next Wednesday. Also, uh, thank you for your continued uh, faithfulness and praying about our our uh, building uh, needs and desires and all those things. I don't mention that regularly, but things are happening there. So continue to pray and and uh, we'll trust. That the, the Lord's leading will, it will uh, be obvious and we'll have the faith to step through those doors as he would lead and that he'll close doors as he would not want us to step through them. So that's our desire. We want to we want to go with God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So and we'll look at that a little bit tonight in the message. So Genesis 46, if you found that and are able, would you please stand out of respect for the scriptures? And we'll look uh, tonight. We're, we'll, uh, we'll look at a couple different passages here in this text, but let's read verses 1 through 7. You follow along, please, as I read Genesis 46, verse 1. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father, Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee unto, into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. And Jacob rose from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones and their wives and the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods, which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him, his sons, his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, all his seed brought he with him into Egypt. I want to talk to you tonight about a glad reunion day. In this chapter, Jacob returns or goes to Egypt, and there he is reunited with his son, Joseph. And of course, we're looking at Joseph in this, these few chapters in particular as a great uh, testimony, a great example, a great type of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's coming a glad reunion day. Let's pray together. Father, again, we thank you for the privilege to gather. I pray that you would meet with us. I pray that Lord, you would wash me and cleanse me, that you would fill me with the Holy Spirit. May I speak exactly what you want spoken and, and the way you want it preached. I pray your word, as you have promised, would not return void. And Lord, that every hearer would be receptive to that which you desire for us to get tonight from thee. Watch over us and bless us again, we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. So we've seen some wonderful portraits of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in these, these few chapters here that we're, we're studying at present. And this evening, as we look at a glad uh, reunion day, uh, we can't help but think about uh, someday soon, there's going to be a wonderful reunion day in heaven for all of us. You say, well, what do you mean by someday soon? You know something we don't know. Well, on eternity scale, a long life is but a drop in the bucket. A life is, is brief, and someday soon there will be a, a reunion day. There will be no more parting there. There will be no more crying, no more pain, no more uh, fear, no sickness, no, no worry about sickness. And whatever we have done for Christ, whatever we have invested for Christ, however we have taken the talents that he's entrusted to us and we have poured ourselves out for the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever 
seeming sacrifice we've made in this life, friend, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. It truly will. You know, we're also privileged in this life to know a little bit of a piece of heaven on earth. And sometimes, as we're going to see here in the life of Jacob tonight, even when we've strayed from the Lord, and we all do from time to time, I hope that your straying is in the ditch and not off on some wild trail, wilderness wandering. I hope it's close to the path and you get back on the path quickly. But even when we stray, aren't you thankful that God is gracious and merciful, allows us to get right with him, restore our restore us back to a renewed, to a right relationship with the Lord uh, once again. Uh, God's good to us. And the point, the points I want us to see, I want to try to, as much as, I, as possible, as we look at these three points I brought up, I'm going to present to you tonight, I, I want to relate them in, in two applications. Uh, the first is obvious, heaven. That's going to be easy to see in our, in our application. But the other one might not always be as obvious, but I, I, I want us to try to look at, look at the text tonight and the points tonight from this perspective, and that is renewal or revival to Christ. When we are right with God, we enjoy some of heaven on earth. When our relationship with the Lord is what it should be, we're in fellowship with Christ. When we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You know, some people are... are gutting it out in life because heaven's out there somewhere. I, I think life does have its difficulties. We all would, anybody with, with common sense and honesty would admit that life's got its challenges. But you know, uh, the Christian life is not just about heaven. It's about in, enjoying this life now. God has given us all things richly to enjoy. And that this life is enjoyed when we live it in obedience to the word of God. We're following his word, his will, and his way. So first of all tonight, I want us to think about this. We need to be ready, ready for reunion day. And we see that again there in those first few verses, verses 1 through 3. Uh, you know, you and I will one day soon meet our maker. And I know that our atheistic government education system is trying to teach our children and unfortunately has been successful in teaching some that are adults and even in government positions today that that we aren't going to, we aren't created but friend we are each and every soul on planet earth has been created of god god uh, made each of you exactly who you are he made me who i am uh, he made no mistake when he made me he made no mistake when he created you uh, one day soon, we're going to meet our maker. It is appointed unto man who wants to die, and after this is judgment. We're going to stand before the Lord, and we need to be ready to meet the Lord. How can we be ready to meet the Lord? I think, first of all, we see here in Israel, in Jacob, that the first thing he did when this news was presented to him, he was finally convinced. You remember as we finished up chapter 45 there that as uh, his sons came back and they brought all this stuff with them and Benjamin was the last one to come come rolling up there in my mind's eye and, and uh, you know, Dad, uh, Joseph is alive and uh, he's, he's Lord of Egypt and he is, he's loaded too. I mean, he, Jacob said, all right, it is enough. I believe you. I'll go see my son. When we get to chapter 46, we know that there's something different about Israel something different about this man Jacob the scheming is no longer part of the program the first thing he does is he's heading toward Egypt and what we understand this would be he would be heading south and he stops in Beersheba which would have been a, a southern uh, town in in Canaan land so just before he cross over into the next uh, country the next nation he pauses there to worship the Lord he worshiped the Lord. In fact, I have in my Bible in the margin next to verse 1, I have he worshiped. He worshiped. Uh, he paused to worship to Lord, the Lord. You know, to worship the Lord is to value him 
And to worship is to value, to worship the Lord as he is, is to value the Lord above all else, including self. He worshiped the Lord. To worship the Lord is to seek him and to trust him. To seek him and to trust him. Isaiah 55, 6, the Bible says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You know, if Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God have, have convicted you, have convinced you by the word of God of your sinfulness and of your need to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to respond to that wooing of the Spirit of God pronto. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But you know, we're not, we're not promised another second. Let alone the, left, the rest of our perceived long life. <clears throat> People die of all ages. One of the most heart-rending things for our medical personnel in recent months has been the number of COVID deaths of the young hadn't been the case for most of this outbreak. And by the way, we still need to hold up our, our, our medical people in, in prayer. They are, they are still on the front lines of this battle. They're still my hero. I know society doesn't think so unless they comply with Dr. Fear, but they're still my hero. Let's leave it at that. Don't want to get us sidetracked. But my point is this, when God convicts, we need to respond. If you're here tonight and you've never received, you never personally repented of your sin and received Christ as your Savior, you need to respond to the Lord now. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a beautiful, wonderful, blessed gift from God. But you shouldn't think you can toy with God's, God the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, or God himself. Uh, we're, not, we're, we're offered salvation, but we're not guaranteed another second, another moment. If you haven't received Christ, you need to respond and respond without delay. So to worship the Lord is to seek him and to trust him. But I want us to also think about this. To worship the Lord is not only to seek him and trust him, but to worship the Lord is also to seek him and obey him. It's to seek him so we can obey him. You see, when we gather in church on a Wednesday night or on a Sunday, on Sunday, the Lord's Day, we're, we're gathering uh, with the Lord's people as God has ordained, forsaking not, assembling ourselves together as the manner of some is, and so much the more as, as you see the day approaching. We're gathering together to worship the Lord. We're saying we value the one true Lord of all, the Lord Jesus Christ, and in that valuing of him, we're seeking his word to discover what he desires. We're seeking him so we can obey him. You know, a lot of people have a lot of Bible knowledge. I'll, I, let, me, let me try to say it this way to help maybe stick in our minds a little bit. Uh, a lot of us know the mind of the Lord, but that doesn't mean we're minding the Lord. And one of the most dangerous things is for somebody to have a whole lot of Bible knowledge and not be living it. We call that rebellion. And sometimes it amazes me what some parents will not permit or accept of their children, but they are ready and willing to, to commit those same kinds of rebellious <coughs> acts against the Lord. So a strange thing. We need to be growing in the grace of in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, so he worshiped the Lord. And then we see in verse 2, I, I love this, and God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, here am I. Now, let's uh, review this just to make sure we're on the same page here and no one's confused. God doesn't speak to us through visions in the night uh, like he did in this, this time, right? You know, Joseph had dreams and Daniel I, and Joseph interpreted dreams and so on and so forth. God speaks to us now through uh, his word and through the spirit of God working, working in our lives and in our midst. But God, God uh, spoke to, to Jacob here, spoke to Israel through uh, dreams, through visions uh, in the night. So I see verse 2 I have written in the margin of my Bible. He, in verse 1, he, he worshiped. In verse 2, he waited. You say, Pastor, where do you see that he waited? He spent the night. He spent the night there. You say, where did he spend the night? 
I don't think it was the Holiday Inn Express or the Hampton Inn. It was some kind of tent. Some kind of tent there. He spent the night there. In the visions of the night, God, God spoke to him. He was waiting for the Lord. In the night, he heard from the Lord. We need, we need to be of the mind that, that Lord, if, if you're for this, then I'm for this. And, Lord, if you're against this, then I'm against this, just as I mentioned earlier. Lord, we, we want to go through the doors that you open by faith. But, Lord, if you close the door, we want to stay on this side of the door by faith. Amen. Both require faith. And you start pushing doors down that God has closed, you will live to regret it. You stop walking through doors that God has opened, you will live to regret it. We need to follow the Lord. Follow the Lord. So he not only worshiped the Lord, he, he waited for the Lord. His, his attitude was, Lord, I'm with you. I'm with you. But then I want us to see in verse 4, I have written in the margin of my Bible next to verse 4, he went. He went. I will go down with thee, verse 4, into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again, and Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. So God had told uh, Jacob told Israel as he, he worshipped the Lord, he made an altar there, which is the way, the way they were to worship in that time, and uh, he was honoring the Lord in his life, he was demonstrating this worship of the Lord to his entire family there were, there were uh, 60, 65 of them I think including uh, Jacob at this time J Joseph, his wife, and his two sons were already in Egypt, we'll get to the 70 later but, but uh, there, were, there were 65 of them there, he worshipped the Lord they all saw his leadership in that he waited for the Lord's message to come to him, and as soon as God spoke, he went. He acted on the word of God. You know, sometimes when God wants us to do something, we think God's got to speak to us three times before we respond. We need to be quick to respond to the Lord. We need to be quick to respond to him. Ready to follow the Lord's, the Lord's leading. He went, he, he worshiped the Lord, he waited for the Lord, and then he went with the Lord. He went where the Lord would have him go. You know, are you ready for a reunion day? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? You know, Revelation 2015 is a, a great promise and a great warning. Whosoever was not found written in the Book of Life was cast to the lake of fire. That is a promise in God's Word. We don't like to think of negative things as promises, but it is. It's just as much a promise as Romans chapter 10 that says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just as much a promise as John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. One day soon, you're going to meet your Maker. Are you ready for reunion day? I want us to see, secondly, not only was He ready for reunion day, but I want us to see that he was running toward reunion day. Notice with me again in, in verse, verse uh, 4 through 7. Let's, I just read verse 4. Let's look at verse 5. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father. Important word there. Carried Jacob their father. Carried's a word I want you to see. And their little ones, their wives, and the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods and they had, that they had gotten in the land of Canaan and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him. His sons, his sons' sons with him, his daughters, his sons' daughters, and all his seed brought he with him into Egypt. I want us to say a couple things here about this running toward reunion day. First of all, this. Jacob spent much of his life running from the Lord's way. You know, Jacob's one of those Bible characters that God blessed in spite of him, in spite of himself. You know, I'm thankful that God has done that with me. Aren't you thankful God has done that with you? Amen. I mean, we deserved to be taken out a long time ago, didn't we? Every one of us. If we got what we deserved, we'd all be in hell tonight. God's, God's been very gracious to me in spite of me. Jacob was blessed of the Lord, even though in many times in his life he was running, running from the Lord. Think of this. He ran from his father and his brother Esau, and he went to Haran. This time period in, in Jacob's life was a, was a type or a picture of the fleshly carnal living. He was running from God. Listen, if you find yourself tonight in a place where you're on the run from God, man, get right with him. 
You know, the regrets of Jacob's life, most of the regrets, many of the regrets of Jacob's life were, were found that they are traced to this time in his life where he was running from the Lord. Running from the Lord. And then we see that not only did he run from his father and brother Esau to Haran, but from there he ran from his uncle Laban back to Canaan. But what's the example or what's the illustration there? This was a time in his life where he was self-sustaining. Now he ran back to Canaan, which was the right place for him to go. He went to the place he was supposed to go. And God was bringing him back into this, this land, but he was still self-sustaining. Jacob was, what is Jacob known as in the Bible? He is the great schemer of the word of God, isn't he? His life is just wrapped up in schemes and, and trying to get an advantage over someone. He started out scheming his, his father and, and his brother with his mother's help. What a mess. My soul, you talk about a, a disheveled home, a mess of a home. They had it. Uh, but he, he in this time in, in Canaan, it was a self-sustaining time. His, his home was a mess, and he, he lived with, with much difficulty. But now we see something different here about Jacob. Jacob's lived a lot of life. Jacob has learned a lot of lessons. And now Jacob is going to go forward... And for some 17 years, he's going to enjoy some fruitfulness in a place he never thought he'd find himself, Egypt. 17 years, he'll be in Egypt. For the rest of Jacob's days, he's going to enjoy some fruitfulness. Because from here forward, Jacob will move in his life God's way. He'll live his life the Lord's way. And he'll enjoy that harvest of spiritual godly living, following the Lord. Here he is, Israel, the, the friend of God. He'll, he will now fulfill God's plan and God's will by the grace of God through faith. You say, how do you see that all, all in that verse? Well, Jacob is being carried. Aren't we being carried by the grace of the Lord? by his sustaining in our life. His sons carry him. He's going to have to learn to trust the Lord. He allows his sons to carry him to Egypt. He's going to trust the Lord at this time. There's no more schemes. There are no more, no more trickery. He's going to follow the Lord. His dependence on others here is a picture of our dependence on the Lord, a dependence on on the Lord's word, a dependence on the Lord's will, and a dependence on the Lord's way. Turn with me, keep your place here in Genesis, and let's go to Psalm 37. I want us to read a few verses here. Psalm 37, we'll begin with one of the most familiar verses in this psalm, and that is verse 23, but we'll read a few after that. So if you'll turn there with me, I'd appreciate it. Psalm 37, and we'll pick it up in verse 23. Psalm 37, verse 23, the Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. And though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Note verse 27, depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. Our God is the God of the living. You know that Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham are alive tonight. They are dwelling forevermore. Dwelling forevermore. They're with the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Listen, how, are you make, how do you make the steps in your life? Are you seeking the Lord? Are you desiring that he would direct the steps of your life? Are you living in agreement with the word of God? Let's follow the book. Follow the word of God. Follow his word. Are you ready? Are you ready to follow the Lord's leading? If the Lord would, would direct you tonight from his word, would you say, yes, Lord? Or would you say, well, why don't you show me that four other places, Lord? You know, it's amazing how when... When the Lord convinces or directs or commands us against our will, we need to see it four times or more. But we will rest 
the scripture. So we can do what we want to do and say, I got a chapter and verse for this. Just follow the Lord. Let's follow the Lord's leading. His word and his will, his way. God's given us his spirit to guide us into all truth. Aren't you thankful for the spirit of God that dwells within us who are believers? Are you ready to follow the Lord's leading? Are you, are you running toward the Lord? Are you running for the Lord? Or are you running from him? May I be a little more pointed about this? You know when you're running from the Lord, you're actually running against him? Running against him? So we see that, that Jacob was not only ready for reunion day, and he was running toward reunion day, but lastly tonight, I want us to see if we'll go back to our text chapter there. Now let's skip ahead to verse 28, if you will. So the Bible lists all of Jacob's uh, sons and heirs and all these, all these people that uh, go with him. And then we get down here to verse uh, 28. I want us to read a few verses here. I want to talk about uh, rewarded on reunion day. Notice what it says in verse 28, Genesis 46. And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen, and they came into the land of Goshen. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, to Goshen, and presented himself unto him. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. Now listen, he's going to live another 17 years, I believe it is. But Jacob was ready to meet the Lord. Kind of reminds us of, uh, was it Simeon or Simon there? When he's held the Lord, uh, I've seen the Lord's Christ. Uh, he was ready to go now. Um, I don't remember if it was Simon or Simeon. Simeon. Simeon, Simeon. all right. Um, in case anybody wanted to be particular, we want to make sure I wanted to try to get it right if we could. But he's he's rewarded on on reunion day. The reward was waiting. The reward was waiting. I want to think about a couple things here. First of all, let's when we think about this reward, let's think first of all about the numbers. The numbers. He brought all he had with him. We go back to verse seven. Uh, end of the verse, and all his seed brought he with him into Egypt. He brought everything he had with him. When Jacob left Canaan. He brought everything he had with him, including all of his family, everybody he could bring with him, he brought, he brought with him. He brought, he brought everybody he could uh, with him. He, he brought all he had with him. In verse 27, we see that there were 70 of them. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions therein and grew and multiplied. It, that's chapter 47. That's not working. All right. Verse 27 of chapter 46. Is the one I'm trying to read. There you go. The sons of Joseph, which were born in Egypt, were two souls, and all the souls of the household of Jacob, which came to Egypt, were three score and ten. So there's seventy of them. All right. So uh, he 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 invested everything he had, himself, and all that were living. You know, Rachel and Leah were buried in Canaan, and and we'll get to. No, he's going to be promised that he's going to be brought back. They're going to bring his bones back to bury them in Canaan land, right? But this is the thing I want us to see. So 70 went in. 70 went in. And God had promised Jacob that he would bring him out again. But look back there in, in verse, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, verse 4. I will go down with thee unto Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again, and Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. So, you're going to go down to Egypt, I'm going with you, and I'm also going to bring you up again. When did God bring Jacob up again? You can give me a round number, it's okay. It's in the hundreds. 400, 400 years later. 400 years later. Did God keep his promise to Jacob? I say a hearty amen. Yeah. I want you to consider something else. When Jacob went into Egypt, God had led him there. God took him there, and God, God did some work. There was some persecution they endured, some difficulty they endured. Seventy went in. Approximately how many came out? We'll just round it off and say a million. Is that, is that fair with everybody? <laughs> Seventy went in, and a million came out. That's not a bad return on investment, is it? <laughs> That's not a bad return on the investment. Seventy go in and a million come out. A million plus. 
You see, uh, we need to invest for the Lord. Jacob invested himself and he led his family to be invested in what God was doing and God reaped for them a tremendous harvest. I tell my Bible class this morning as I was headed uh, home yesterday from, from, uh, from the church and I went, uh, went through Miamisburg and they were harvesting a field there uh, next to the, next, right there on uh, 725 and Soldier's Home. I think that's where that is. There's cornfields in there. And you know, they planted that thing. They planted it real quick. But they planted it with some bags of seed. I counted five semi-trucks parked in that field or next to the road waiting as they were harvesting that field. And they were, they were pouring the grain in those trucks as fast as they could. Uh, I mean, the combines were dumping it, dumping it as quick as they could. I mean, they were reaping a harvest and a half. Oh, my soul, that, that plot of land produced a good crop this year, a bumper crop. Look, when we invest for the Lord, we can, we can, we can count on this. <coughs> We're going to reap a tremendous harvest, a tremendous abundance for what little bit we invest for him. And that includes our 70, 80, or whatever gracious years beyond that God would give us. We need to invest for the Lord. Jacob went down into Egypt, which there were 70 of them, and he, he returned. He returned 400 years later, and there were a million plus. And by the way, they spoiled the Egyptians on the way out. You do remember that, don't you? I'm not preaching Exodus tonight, but I want to make sure we understand our Bibles here. God, I'll say it this way, God blessed them real good. He always does. When we obey the Lord, when we mind the Lord, He always does. It may not seem like it in a moment. There's some Job seasons in life. None as bad as Job's. But God is always good. So we see the reward on reunion day. The reward was waiting. We, see, we think about the numbers. The second thing I want us to think about at this point is this, the messenger. The messenger. What did he do there in verse 28? He sent Judah before him unto Joseph. Why did he do that? Why did Jacob send Judah before him unto Joseph? Well, I think there's a glimpse here, a picture of the grace of God in Judah's life. You know, Judah would be the tribe that David comes from. Judah would be the leadership tribe. Judah would be the tribe of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? There's just an example here. Not get, the Bible is awesome. It's without error. It, God is, is, is showing us that everything just lines up perfectly in the Word of God. You say, well, preacher, I've got this question about this and this over here. This doesn't seem to line up. That's because we haven't been, been able to figure it out yet. It lines up. Our maker, our creator, the God who gave us the book, is perfect. The word of God lines up. If it doesn't make sense to us, then we're not smart enough to figure it out yet. That's what the deal is. Some say, well, I just, I, I don't know if I can trust a God that way. What God are you going to trust? The problem is most of us are trying to trust the God we see in the mirror. And not the God of the Bible. Amen. What was us? I know, that's, that hurts. It's all too true too often though, for, for us, even, even who are believers many times. Judah, this, to this point, had been less than an exemplary rep, representative and leader, hadn't he? But he sent him on ahead. He sent him on ahead. I want us to think about something else here. Joseph is a type of Christ. Did you notice that Judah went on ahead to meet Joseph, but Joseph had people looking for him? looking for his family to come in. And someone came back and told Joseph, hey, uh, that group from Canaan, that caravan, man, there's a whole pile of them coming over the horizon. Joseph said, hey, get my royal chariot ready. We're going to go out and meet them. Reminds me of that account there we have where Stephen was stoned. And the Bible tells us that the Lord stood up. The Lord Jesus stood up. You know, heaven pays attention when we're doing the right thing. The Lord Jesus is going to welcome us home someday. You know where his reward for his suffering? He finished the gospel task, but you and I who are recipients of the gospel, who've received Jesus Christ as our Savior, we're his reward. He's going to welcome us home someday. 
And we say things like uh, when, when someone passes from this life, we say phrases to, that we desire would be a comfort to loved ones and friends who are grieving. And, and we say things like, well, they're, they're safe in the arms of Jesus now. And sometimes you might think, well, that's just, you know, exaggeration and trying to make people feel good. You know, that's not an exaggeration. When a believer passes from this life, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. They're safe with the Lord. They're safely home. Safely home. And I think here as well, we see this, we see this in verse, verse uh, 29, in Israel, the middle of the verse, and Israel has, uh, let's just read the whole thing, verse 29, Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, to Goshen, presented himself unto him, and he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. A good while. A good while. They wept a good while. In Revelation chapter 7 and verse 17, the Bible says, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and, they, and shall lead them unto the living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Verse 24. And God shall, or Revelation 21 and verse 4, the Bible says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, Neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You know, we weep for sorrow and we weep for joy in this life, don't we? We weep for sorrow, we weep for joy. I think there's going to be some weeping for sorrow and some weeping for joy in heaven. I think when, when we see the Lord, and he, we shall see him as he is, and, and I, I, think, I think for the first time ever, we're really going to understand what it was God saved us from. And I think we're all going to be blubbering messes. How could God love a sinner such as I? How could God put up with my, I use the word shenanigans, time and time again? I think we're just going to weep. Lord, I'm undeserving. Undeserving. There's going to come a point where God's just going to wipe the tears away. That's enough. We've wept a while. It's now time to enter into the joy of the Lord. I think there's also going to be some, some tears of sorrow. Tears of sorrow. What would those tears of sorrow be? I, I think they could be many things. Regrets for times we didn't serve the Lord as we should. Regrets for not using the talents that God entrusted to us as we should. Uh, some regrets for not being the witness that we should be. You know, God's going to wipe all those tears away someday. They'll be gone. They wept and hugged each other for a while there, but then it was over. The weeping was over. It was time to enjoy their time together, Jacob and Joseph, together in Egypt. You know, heaven is truly a wonderful, wonderful place. The songwriter said, won't it be wonderful there, having no burdens to bear, Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Walking and talking with Christ, the supernal one. Won't it be wonderful there? You know, the songwriter nailed it. This is going to be wonderful. One of my dad's favorite words, you know. Wonderful. Whoa, wow. Like a kid uh, seeing something they've never seen before. Whoa. I don't know if you been able and blessed to travel some of the amazing uh, sites in our across America. In our, we have a, a land that is just gorgeous and beautiful. I don't know what your flavor is, whether it's the beach or the mountains or, or someplace in between. There's, this is a beautiful land. There's t times we, we kind of, you're traveling, going to see something, you come around a corner and you go, and you, and you may see it and you go, wow, I thought that was going to be a little more impressive then uh, people, you know, they kind of oversold it. Uh, there are other times you come around a corner and you see something and go, whoa, I can't believe more people haven't talked about this place. You know, where there's going to be no disappointment when we get to heaven. Uh, it has not been oversold. You can't oversell heaven. It's going to be wonderful, wonderful. It'll be a glad reunion day for the saints of old will be reunited and we shall all see Jesus. 
It's going to be wonderful to see loved ones and saints of old and friends. And I think I get reminiscent about some of the people that used to occupy seats in this auditorium and think, boy, heaven's going to be a wonderful place, sounding sweeter all the time. We say those kinds of things, and we certainly mean them. But being with Jesus is what it's going to all going to be about. It'll be neat to see Moses and Jacob and Isaac and some of these other characters. But it's all going to be about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the one, the only one, who could pay the price. And he's the only one who would pay the price. And aren't you thankful he did? He did pay the price that we could be redeemed. It'll be a glad reunion day for the saints of old. But you know, I began with a statement, one day soon we're all going to meet our maker. When that time comes to stand before the Lord for those who have rejected our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it's not going to be a glad reunion day. May I say to you this way, it's going to be a sad rejection day. We may get shunned and rejected in this life and it can hurt hurt us hurt our feelings hurt our emotions we didn't get a promotion to stand before the lord and hear those dreaded dreaded words of all time depart from me i never knew you what a sad sad day are you ready to meet the lord i think that there will also be much regret for the saved who buried their talent or wasted their substance with riotous living but friend, we don't have to arrive at that day with regret. We can be ready to meet the Lord. We can be ready to meet the Lord. How can we be ready for that reunion day as Jacob was ready for that day? He worshiped the Lord. He waited for the Lord. And then he went with the Lord. He was running for the Lord. Are you running your ways for the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you in it for him? I'm sure that there are other worthy, worthy reasons to follow the Lord. There are benefits and blessings to follow the Lord. The steps of a good man are... Uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Those, those, that's a good thing. It's a good life when we follow the Lord. We have, uh, perhaps you're following the Lord for, for, for family or friends or, or not to let someone down. Those aren't bad reasons, but listen, the ultimate reason needs to be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Run your race for him. Are you running toward reunion day? Or are you running from that reunion day? Let's follow the Lord follow the Lord. A glad reunion day. May we look forward to it with anticipation. Trusting the Lord until he tarries his coming or to, as he tarries his calling us home in his timing. Let's follow him. Father, thank you for our time together in your word tonight. I pray I've said something that's been a, a help, a challenge, a conviction as you would desire for each of us tonight. Lord, I pray you'd give us the good sense to thank you for that which you've spoken to us about and, and respond to you in a way that would be pleasing to you. Thank you for your graciousness to us, your long-suffering. Lord, it's easy for us to pick on some of these Bible characters that didn't always do right. In fact, the matter is, we're sure thankful you recorded them because there's hope for us. So Lord, help us to follow you be ready for that reunion day, that it would be a glad reunion day. Lord, if there is anyone here tonight that although they may know the gospel, they've never received the gift of salvation. I pray they'd be saved tonight. Help us to walk with you and learn from you. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Let's stand together tonight. Andrew will play a hymn of invitation.